I have a question, Stuart. Um, you know, it's Chris. Yes. During, since we've had the pandemic, I've been vacillating between the, the goodness of being in solitude and having the time and the distance to work on myself and extreme loneliness because of not being able to be with other people very much. Could you please talk about that? Well, you know, Chris, if you can be happy living with yourself, you know, alone with nobody around, you're really not going to be happy because you're around other people. I mean, what you're using is other people as a substitute for you finding that connection to God inside yourself that allows you to be a happy person no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key to this work is Look, I mean, look, I spend a lot of time during the day by myself. At the same time, you know, I come to these classes, there's 30 some odd people sitting here. And I discovered years ago that my job is, you know, to learn how to live with an open heart, no matter what the circumstances. Uh -huh. And they're going to be good circumstances, they're going to be bad circumstances, and not to spend my life being dependent upon other people to make me happy because it doesn't work. You know, if you, if you can't keep your heart open inside, you know, while you're alone, you're gonna have a very difficult time dealing with other people. Because once you get to know people, you understand they become very complex and very difficult. You know, it's much easier not to know them and think about, you know, loving them and but once you get to know people it becomes a very complex situation mm -hmm. and then you say oh my god i would rather be alone <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, you know you, you crave other people and when you get to them and have them you know, oh my god what am i doing here you know yeah so the whole point of all this is this work is about building a chakra system that can keep your heart open no matter what is going on in your life, you know, because no matter whether you're with one person, you're by yourself, you're with 50 people, you understand? I mean, the whole point of all of this is to be open and to have the capacity to stay open no matter what the circumstances are. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I wouldn't rely upon other people to make me happy, I don't. My job is to, whatever's going on in my life, I have to find joy in my heart. And I don't always do it. Yeah, you know, we're all human and things happen and stuff, you know, shit hits the fan and stuff happens and we, you know, and uh, suddenly the emotions come up. But then we have an exercise that can transform whatever the negative quantity is into chi, into strength, into balance, harmony. That chi, that strength and balance enables us to keep our hearts open. You know, I have so many, oh, I gotta be in nature to be happy. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. you, know? Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I don't really believe that. You understand? I mean, I'll never forget, I wrote this, I had this Japanese group that I was writing songs, lyrics for, they were doing concerts all over New York. And they asked me to write some, and I wrote one lyric, but I'll never forget, they wrote a song to it, it blew me away. And it was something, I was like, this is like 40 years, 30 years ago. You know, uh, it was something to the effect that, you know, I, I'm in the forest, oh, yeah. you know, the night is still, the crickets are still, the birds are still, if only my mind would just shut up. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, that's really the case with people. The whole point is to get the mind to be quiet so that we can really receive spiritual energy. Because no matter where we are, the mind just yaks away. It doesn't matter if you're one person, a million people, you know, the mind just never shuts up. I think the hard part for me is no hugs. <laughs> well, Okay, then be grateful that you're not hugging 20 people and getting <laughs> Thank you. 
something positive you can find in every situation, you know? Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Hi, Stuart, I would like to ask a question. How do you, what, what do you recommend to do to overcome uh, really extreme tiredness during, during a class? You know, I, I think I talk about this after every meditation. Uh, look, you know, there's, there's two answers to that. Well, after, if you're really tired, then after the meditation, go to sleep. You know, get, take a nap, get some sleep, relax yourself that way. But the other, then on the other aspect of this, usually when one is that tired during meditation, you know, it's just resistance to some deeper opening that is ready to take place inside yourself. I mean, look, if we're all sitting in a room, 30 some odd people, and I scream fire, you know, everybody would get enough adrenaline to run out of that room in two seconds. I don't care how tired you are. You know, I remember I was once kidding around and I told a story where I, you know, I was out with his girlfriend and we were both drunk and stoned. And I mean, I was like 21 years old at the time. You know, and we were both, it was like four o'clock in the morning and we crawled up five flights of steps, got into bed, dead tired, and we had the energy to make love for two hours after all that. It depends on what your motivations are, you know? And you can inspire yourself to overcome tiredness. It was usually tiredness in class means you are ready to take some kind of a step inside yourself. And if you get to the other side of the tiredness, there's going to be something extraordinary that's going to open. And sometimes you got to trick yourself. You just, you know, you take something into your heart that is juicy and full of life and full of love. It'll instantly wake you up. You know, because there's always that excess of energy in every human being. And there's always that other side of tiredness, you know, that represents such an incredible opportunity to change and to grow and to have the strength to overcome the tiredness and tap new levels of creative energy that are ready to open. And then again, you know, look, we work all day, we get tired and you know, you go to sleep. You get a night's sleep, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be up for 24 hours. So, you know, there's all measures of dealing with tiredness. And I know that, uh, that kind of tiredness in a class just represents to me, Stuart, take a deep breath, open deeper, ask deeper, to tap that need inside yourself to grow. And it usually dissolves the tiredness and the, the class is something miraculous. I mean, sometimes I come to these classes, and I say, how the hell am I gonna do this? I am so tired, you know, from what the day was. And by the end of the class, I feel like I'm 20 years old. So much energy has come and vitality has come into me to open my whole system, you know, and burn up the tiredness. I mean, human beings are endlessly resourceful, you know? I mean, it depends upon what your motivations are, <laughs> what your priorities are. I mean, you know, uh, you know, if somebody really wants to do something, they will overcome you know, God knows what in order to do it, you know? Well, I just, maybe I didn't uh, ask it correctly. I just, uh, I was sick uh, last night and I was awake for many hours and then I probably slept for two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and I thought I will join the class anyway, but then I just fall asleep in the middle of your class. Sometimes also when you are asleep, you know, awake at night like that, it's higher energies working on you. And sometimes there's so much energy that you don't need to sleep. Let them work on you, just relax, let these higher forces come down. There are cosmic doctors. I don't, you know, I never really talk about this, but they come and do surgery. They do operations on, on the chakras on people. And usually that, that happens when you're you know, you're asleep or you're almost asleep. 
it, it, you get more relaxed inside and these cosmic physicians can come, you know, and do very deep work to open the chakra system inside a person. And, you know, a lot of people, oh, I didn't get my eight hours. All right, you didn't get your eight hours. You had eight hours or six hours of this higher energy working on you. You'll probably have more energy that fall day than when you get your eight hours. And then the next night you'll get your eight hours, you know? It's part of consciousness. Do you all understand that? This is what consciousness is. Knowing, not forcing, not having it to be the way you think it's supposed to be, but opening to what comes and what works on you and what helps you, you know, and learning how to get past all the resistance inside to tapping this vast and endless source of creative energy that's in the universe. And what enables a person to do this is really a strong chakra system. and being aware of what you're capable of, of any given day, any given moment during the day. Not to beat yourself up because you can't climb Mount Fuji at that moment, you know? You just say, okay, you sit at the base and meditate a little bit and let the energy work on you. And then there's that wonderful Japanese saying, climb, climb Mount Fuji, oh snail, but slowly, slowly. I mean, that is so brilliant because we all want to do everything. You know, we live in a world where you have internet that comes in a second and a half and it's not fast enough. Somebody invented something to come in a half a second. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous, you know, the kind of world we live in where everything has to be so instantaneous. And I always used to joke around saying, you know, the thing, things that are instantaneous in life are junk food, you know, and everything of an instantaneous nature is going to just do nothing but upset your stomach. Patience, consciousness, you know, the ability to recognize the moment and to be able to respond to the moment the way you have to respond to it. That's the key to all of this. Not having to, oh my God, you know, I got to make, I got to do this, I got to create <laughs> and you know and it always I always talk I remind me of Rudy sitting in his gallery there I never met anyone with energy like Rudy I mean you know I used to get like a piece of burnt toast when I was around him and he's sitting there stringing beads and I started to smile laugh I said Rudy what what are you doing he said Stuart this is all I'm capable of doing today the energy is so strong that I have to do the least amount right now to let this energy work on me and change me and help me to grow. Well, let me tell you, that was a major lesson for me to see my spiritual teacher sitting there stringing beads, telling me that he's incapable of doing anything else today because the energy is so strong and working so deeply on him. But he's, I actually feel paralyzed, you know? The next day he was, you know, a tiger roaring in the forest. You know, he was just, the energy was, you know, classes were unbelievable, you know? What an incredible thing to learn. At really at a young age, I learned that he taught me that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? I would like to ask. I have a question, Stuart. Um, so I don't understand we're supposed to receive. Are we supposed to be giving anything in exchange? You know, right now you're all here to build your inner lives. You know, and if you learn to receive unconditionally in these classes, you understand it will trans for itself to the, abil the ability to give unconditionally. You know, by receiving in these classes and taking in the Shakti and not, you know, worrying about anything else, the chakra system will develop to the point where you in turn will be able to give something vital and important to another human being. So that very 
capacity to, you know, a lot of people can't perceive, they have to give all the time. And that's very dangerous because they just drain their whole life out of them. But we have to be able to receive. I mean, look, you know, an automobile needs gasoline in order to run. You know, if you don't put gasoline in the automobile, it's not going to run. If a refrigerator is not connected to electricity, it's not going to run. We need Shakti, we need energy. We need to receive that so that we can, our system can run. And then in the process of it really developing like that, we can unconditionally give. So just be grateful you can sit and take in and then you'll find ways of giving, you know? I mean, people give to me, like they send donations and they, you know, I mean, it's, you know, every time I get, you know, these donations, every single one of them could be $5, it could be $100, they really open my heart. Somebody is saying, thank you, not just lip service, thank you. They're, they're giving something from themselves, they're saying, thank you. And I think that's an amazing thing. It really is a way to, you know, you get big enough to give something, to say thank you. I mean, I've always told a story about, I was standing in Rudy's store one day and this woman walked in with this gigantic bouquet of flowers and wanted to get, and he gave it back to her. And he told her, you cannot buy your way into heaven. And then when I found out what the story was, what really happened, I, I understood it profoundly. This woman was trying to buy Rudy. And, you know, and he said, no, it doesn't work. It has to come from your heart. And then literally 10 minutes later, one of his students walked in with a bar of chocolate. <laughs> he thought that Rudy was given, you know, uh, you know, like somebody just walked in and wrote him a check for $5 million, this bar of chocolate. He broke up every little piece and gave one to everybody that was around him. He hugged this young man. I mean, it was an extraordinary thing to watch. And that bar of chocolate came from a deep place of gratitude. It wasn't him trying to buy Rudy. And Rudy's response to me was so amazing, you know? The amount of love and, you know, because that chocolate bar came right out of that young man's heart. Thank you, Rudy, you saved my life. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? I have a question, Stuart. Um, hey, Wendy, you don't have a question. <laughs> <laughs> For you, always. Um, what is, how do we know, or how do I know if I'm tired because I'm over giving and not really receiving enough, or if I'm tired because, you know, I'm doing the work and the energy is working, you know, with me in that way? Look, how do you know? You know, look, to be honest, I'm not avoiding the answer. When it, I've been doing this work for a very long time. And the more I do it, the less I know. You understand? And I, I try to use everything in the moment to build my life. And if I'm doing the meditation and I feel tired, it could be because I had a very long day, a very hard day. Usually in my life, it's 10 minutes before the meditation, I'm completely exhausted. I say, how am I going to do this today? You know? And then I sit down and by the end of the meditation, I tell you, I feel like I'm 20 years old. I have so much energy. How do I know? I don't know. I do know I need the meditation for my spiritual life. That I do know. And because of that, it doesn't matter what the hell my condition is. I will do it. And I will find ways of energizing myself, breaking myself down, getting past, whether it's tiredness, or ache, or pain, or whatever, you know, and getting past it to the point where my whole inner life gets revitalized 
through the meditation. So it doesn't matter to me if I'm tired because I spent a whole day digging ditches or I'm tired because I'm thinking too much or I'm tired because I've been doing such deep work on the chakra system that that itself was tiring me out. None of that matters to me. All I know is I have to sit down and do my inner work and whatever my condition is, I have to make it work for me. And all the rest of it is, well, either, or should I, shouldn't I, you know, you know, I have people tell me, well, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm too upset to meditate today. It's when they really need meditation. I have any people tell me that? Well, I didn't go to class because I was feeling tired. I was feeling upset. I was feeling that and it's really at those moments that people need it more than anything because they will revitalize their system. Everybody thinks they have to be perfect to come here. That's ridiculous. You know, you don't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect. We all have imperfections, but we need to use what is available to work on ourselves so that we can, you know, transcend those imperfections and get to a higher state of consciousness. So I don't know, Wendy. All I know is it doesn't matter what my condition is. I mean, the other day I, I couldn't even stand. I, I, you know, I had so much pain that I said, okay, I don't want to inflict this. But you know, I, today I have a little pain. There's still some swelling. I'm here, you know. And I know by being here, I get more energy. I get more life. I get more vitality inside myself. So this is a priority in my life. I'm here more than everybody. <laughs> I'm more than all of you. I'm here. I probably needed less than any of you. And I'm here more than all of you. I wasn't questioning the meditation so much. I was questioning how to gauge if I should be, could be changing certain things I'm doing in my life so I could be more available in the meditation oh, or. You can do that. Yeah, you can change things that just waste your time and energy and not do them and apply yourself in a deeper, use that energy when you come to class. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we do every day that's just such a waste of energy, you know, but we need to do things, you know, we need to take out the garbage. We need to wash the dishes. We need to cook. We need to do these things, you know, and uh, we need to learn how to do them also with an open heart. Otherwise the food tastes pretty bad. So I don't worry about it. All of those things refine themselves as you grow inside, choices you make every day change, you know, and they get more refined and they get, uh, you know, choices that don't waste your energy during the day. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Hi, Stuart. It's Paula. I find I, was <laughs> I, I heard you in my mind's eye. Um, I find your suggestion for visualizing in the Hara as if um, a lotus flower is opening as we focus on it. And I find it's more powerful for me when I do that. And I feel like it also ignites the tailbone. Um, could you talk about the connection of the lotus flower and the hara? Yeah. Um, the, the connection between the lotus flower and the hara is in the sexual chakra. And I talk about this a lot. I get questions all the time about this, you know. I mean, look, the energy has to move through the sexual area. The sexual area is the area of rebirth. It's the area where the union of the male-female energy takes place. That marriage of energies gives birth to the Kundalini. 
So having that, metaphorically speaking, that lotus flower open in the hara, having that incredible power of that energy, the chi developing in the hara enables one to draw the energy through the sex. And that's where, you know, that marriage takes place and that will activate Kundalini. Tantric yoga is really all about the activation of Kundalini. And they always, you know, you know, you'll see books on Tantra with all the gods and, you know, the demigod, they're all, you know, in co with consorts making love and, you know, these tantric positions. And, and it's, it's really about that. It's about that union of the male female. Because that union is essential if Kundalini is going to be activated in a healthy way. So you have three elements. You know, the reason I always talk about the Hara being like a great lotus flower is look, you know, it's almost a funny thing. You know, I, I always say, you know, I was in the, I've been in the Asian art business 30 years. I mean, I don't have galleries anymore, but I, I still buy that stuff. You know, I, I like Buddhas and Hindu, Hindu and Buddhist art. And, you know, and the, the incredible thing is you always see a Buddha sitting on a lotus flower. It's the base, it's the foundation of the Buddha, of the energy emanating from the Buddha. It's the foundation inside each and every one of us. You know, the third chakra, the lotus base, the, you know, the foundation in us. And it's essential for that to open. Whether you visualize a lotus flower or not, it doesn't matter. The mind has to be focused there so that chakra can open. When that chakra opens, the energy then flows, and then that union takes place in the sexual area, the match that activates Kundalini. Kundalini is the pathway to enlightenment. So all of this takes place in the lower chakras, which is something that most people don't even teach, for God's sake. They teach about, you know, focus in the heart, focus in the third eye, focus on the crown, you know, and I never understood that because first of all, you need to be grounded. The lotus base, the third chakra, the chakra below the navel is the grounding, it's the foundation inside. It's the strength that enables us to open every one of the, ch of the chakras. Because we need that kind of foundation in order to open the rest of the chakras. And it also allows energy to move through the sex. Where that oneness, that wholeness, that you know, the yin yang, the you know, Shiva Shakti, the male female principle is the first place where it unifies and it activates Kundalini. It's just a process of allowing these chakras to do what they're there to do, supposed to do, you know. Is that clear? Yes, very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? Everybody. Okay. Again, just to finish up, it's all a process. Process. And we have to stop interfering with that process. That's our job. We stop interfering with that process by developing a chakra system, which is directly linked to higher energy in the universe. We get out, we have to get out of the way. You know, and I hate to say it, but this is something that, you know, we're not taught. We're taught that we got to make it happen from the earliest periods of our life instead of we have to get out of the way so that it can happen, it can take place. And all we do is learn the craft. It's like learning a musical instrument, you gotta know the craft. Learning how to paint, you gotta know the craft. And then once you got the craft down, it just comes through just flows through and it comes in extraordinary ways depending upon the uniqueness of each human being.
Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, no, thank you, God bless you all. And in all humility, I am so grateful to be here, to be part of what's going on here, to be doing this. And, and I can't do it without people attending. So God bless you all and thank you for being here and allowing us to do this kind of work and allowing people to come here literally from all over the world to here, you know, and it's just to me a great miracle. So bless you and thank you. There'll be a class on what is today? Monday on Wednesday. There'll be a class. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you.